Good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is David Weinstein. I'm the director of Camp Tell Yehuda. And welcome. So glad you're all here. We wanted to give you a chance to see some of the uh, sort of sights and sounds of Tell Yehuda. And of course, all of the, those videos that we're sharing just now are videos that you can find on our Facebook, on our, I'm sorry, our YouTube page as well. So, um, I have to be honest, watching those videos, which were from 2019, from our first session was really hard. It's the first time I've gotten back and watched them in a, uh, in a few months, because it's been too hard to watch. And, uh, but it feels like a good time to be looking back because we're really getting ready to look forward now as we get thinking about what it means to get back to Barryville. Barryville, where Tell Yehuda is located and starting to plan for summer 2021. I certainly know that this has been an incredibly hard time for all of you, for all of us, um, and the uncertainty continues. And while we certainly cannot be sure about what next summer will bring, our plan right now is to be back in camp. Um, and our plan is to be back in camp with at least 300 teenagers, uh, creating what we've been doing since 1948, which is an amazing uh, Jewish teen community in New York. So um, I wanted to introduce some of the people who are gonna be on the call with us this evening. 
And after I do that, um, I want to see who you are out there in Zoom land. So uh, once again, I'm David Weinstein, I'm director of Tell Yehuda. I started going to Tell Yehuda in 1978 as a camper after going to Sprout Lake for a couple of years and uh, met my wife at Sprout Lake in 1976 and have had raised two kids who have gone to camp and gone on your course and have worked at camp as well. So, uh, you know, it's all in the family for us. Uh, the second person I, I want to introduce herself is Isabel Joseph. Isabel, say hi. Hi, I'm the registrar. I'm the one who a lot of you will talk to about payment and all that stuff and plans and answer the phone and be emailing with you. So, nice to meet you. Um, Isabel, more than that, just sort of keeps the whole thing running. Um, the whole structure running, she will be your best friend as you go through all these processes. And I, I've never met somebody more helpful to other people. So, um, you know, call her, say hi. Even if you don't have a question, you can call and just say, hey, Isabel, how are you doing today? And Isabel, where'd you go to camp before Tell Yehuda? Um, I went to CJ. All right. I know there's a lot of CJ people on the call. So Isabel is a CJ native herself. Um, the next person, um, currently in New Jersey, originally from California, is the master of the program, of the fun, of the staff, uh, sort of making the activities and all the fun and learning the kids are gonna do happen this summer. And that is Mac Lindner. Mac, say hi. Hey everyone, it's nice to see all of you tonight. All right. Um, oh, I went ahead. Um, and then, uh, go back, okay. Thank you, Mac. Um, Mac didn't grow up in Young Judea, but he's become one of us now. Uh, he's more Young Judean than those of us who have been here for a long time. Uh, and then uh, sitting on the couch in New York City, oh, our friend Noah Wilker. Noah, say hi. Hello, everyone. Hope all's well. All right, during the day, Noah Wilker keeping the behind the scenes things in camp happening, all the operations, and then in the evening, pulling out that guitar and making music that uh, if you are a camper on here, um, or you're going to be a camper, you're going to spend many Saturday nights hearing uh, the sweet music of Noah Wilker uh, in, on the Broza stage. Uh, actually, not the Broza stage. And then we've got some amazing people who've recently been campers at Tell Yehuda. Um, they're on the National Mosque of Young Judea, which means they're on the National Board of Young Judea. Uh, they're, they're really the peer leaders of the movement. So I'm going to uh, ask them to introduce themselves, say a few words. They know what to say. So let's start off with uh, Manny Burak. Throw it out over to Manny. Hi, I'm Manny. I'm the National Bow Green Programmer on the Young Judea National Mosque route. So I'm in charge of all of the teen programming for year round and all the National Mosque route, including myself, are gonna be working at camp this summer. Um, so yeah, I'll pass it off to Massimo. Hi, I'm Massimo. I'm the National Social Action Programmer. I'm in charge of making sure we do a lot of good stuff throughout the year and help a lot of people. Um, I also will be out working this summer and I hope you have a good night. I'll pass it on to Sivan. Hi, I'm Sivan. I am a national peer Zoom, so I handle social media and communications. Um, other than that, I've been going to Young Judea camps for nine summers and I started at CJ. So, yeah. Okay, a lot of CJ representation this evening. Excellent. Got some Sprout Lake representation. I know we got a lot of Texas people on this call. Um, and we're gonna hear who all of you are in a moment. Well, not here, we're gonna see who you are in a moment. So I, I need you guys to participate in a little bit of a campy activity. Since we've been online so much, we've had to come up with like camp, campy ways to do icebreakers online. So I, I, we're gonna ask you to do something. We're gonna ask you to turn on your videos for a moment. And I know you don't all, you don't always, you don't all wanna turn them on, but thank you. Cause then we're gonna ask you to turn them on and off in a moment uh, to sort of see who's here. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see a lot of teenagers here, which is really, really awesome. Okay, so hopefully you've got the like the tile version of the screen now. You can see a lot of these people. And when I when I tell you to turn your your screens off, everybody's gonna turn their screen off, and then I'm gonna give you a prompt and ask you to turn your screen back on again. So that's everybody's practice. David, everybody, turn your screen off. If you're sharing your screen, we can't see everybody. Yeah, um, let me stop share. Thank you so much that's why massimo is here did i stop sharing okay thank you massimo 
Oh, it's good to have a tech genius. Okay, everybody's, everybody, they're off, they're off. Come on, everybody off. All right, some of you don't still in my, okay. If you are a teenager, turn your screen, not if you feel like a teenager, by the way, I see some of you out there. If you are a teenager, turn your screen on. Adults, leave your screens off. Let's just see the kids. Here we go. All right, great. All right, kids, you gotta turn your screens off now. All right, let's see the, uh, let's see the parents now. Let's see just the parents. Hey, parents. Look, put, just go away for a few moments. I know you've been waiting for that. Uh, all right, now everybody, let's turn our screens back off again. All right, everybody off. There we go. All right, if you ever went to, um, if you ever went to Camp Young Judea, Texas, turn your screen on. Camp Young Judea, Texas in Wimberley. Let's see, where are the Texans? Oh, there we go, I see some Texans. Hey, CYJ Texas in the house. All right, all right. Oh, and there's Iris from the CYJ Texas staff. Hi, Iris, so glad you could join us. All right, let's get those screens off again. Here we go. We're going out to Wapaka, Wisconsin to CYJ Midwest. If you ever went to CYJ Midwest or CYJ Michigan, if you're an alum of there, turn your screens on. Yeah, Mindy's happy. I see Mindy over there. I see some more CYJ Midwest people. All right, we love Wapaka. All right, screens off, please. All right, here we go, Sprout Lake. Let's get your screens on Sprout Lake. If you went there, if you been there before. All right, all right, Sprout Lake. It's my old stomping ground. And here we go. Uh, screens off, it's time for these people. Let's go Hendersonville CJ with your cameras on. Yeah, CJ. All right. I will tell you, um, this is a fun way to do things. Maccabiah is gonna be even more fun when we're really, really in competition with each other. All right, everybody can turn your screens back on now. And um, it's good to see that we've got people from all over the country, from all of our Young Jaday camps. Um, you know, the thing about Tell Yehuda is this is the place where people from all of our Young Jaday camps come together and make best friends with people who went to all these different camps. So some of you out there right now, you're, you know, you're on the screen and you've been to CYJ Texas or Midwest or Sprout or CJ, and you're about to make your best friends in the world. If you haven't been here before, you're about to make best friends that live all over the country. Parents, I want to apologize in advance. It's gonna cost you a lot of money after camp is over because they're gonna wanna see their friends all over the country. So don't be surprised if they say winter 2021, I'd really like to go to Miami, or I'd like to go down to Austin to see my new best friends. So I'm warning you right now, it's not just the cost of camp, it is also the cost of um, best friends from all over the country. I will tell you, if someone went to tell you who to, uh, 40 years ago, many of my best friends are those I met from all over the country, um, and they're still my, my closest and dearest friends in the world. Okay, so um, a couple of things about how we're going to work tonight. Um, we're going to um, keep everybody on mute for a little while so we can say some words. We'll try not to make them too long. And um, about halfway through, in about 20 minutes or so, we're going to send all the teens out to a breakout room with Massimo and Sivan and Manny, just them. Talk about camp, ask your own questions, what it's really like to go there. And we'll keep the parents here and we'll talk about fun things like money and travel and health care and COVID and all those things. Um, but first, we'll have everybody together. And we're asking that all the teens, if you haven't done this yet, is to rename yourself, um, keep, your, keep your name. And then after your name, um, if, you are in, if you are in ninth grade, currently in eighth grade, you're going to put the word Alomim next to your name. Um, and this will be in the chat also. If you are in currently in ninth grade, you're going to put the name Yachad next to your name. And if you are in currently in 10th grade, you're going to put Hadracha. And if you're in 11th, you're going to put Gesher. That's just for the teens. 
parents, you don't need to know what grade your kids are in. Um, and just a real quick thing, I know that um, some of you have some questions, you know, ask you to throw them in the chat for right now. Um, I'll get them by Slack at some point during this. We'll get to all of your questions. And if they're quick questions, Isabel is there and she's answering those questions as we go along. All right, let's talk about Tell Yehuda and what it is. I'll talk for a few moments and then I'm gonna throw it over to Mac in a moment. So, you know, ultimately, let me, oh, sorry, not on my screen yet. Device audio. We good here? We see my um, PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So, as I said before, we've been doing this since 1948. Not me, but my people before me and people before them. We're on third generation TY campers now. Um, and what we've been doing isn't so different. Uh, people ask me, alumni ask me all the time, you know, is TY changed? And my answer is always it's, it's exactly the same and it's completely different. But here's, what the, here's what's the same as our mission, uh, to inspire Jewish and Zionist youth from around the world to experience and embrace the diversity of the Jewish people in a joyful, keyword joyful, and diverse community while training them to become leaders who will affect positive change for the Jewish people, Israel, and the world. Could this ever be more necessary than it is right now um, as we're at home and we need to get out there and um, be in a community, be in a diverse community, and go out there and change the world more important than ever and we know that it seems like really a long way off till we're going to get there but we are um, tell you who it is in barryville new york barryville new york sits on the delaware river and really if you think about the map where new york new jersey and pennsylvania meet we're right in that corner about two hours west of new york city two hour drive from newark airport where some of you will fly into in june and um, we're, as I said, we're on 150 acres right along the river. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you'll have a chance to get on the Delaware River this summer. So we're, we've made some changes uh, for this coming summer. And I'm going to send it over to Mac in just a moment. But one of the things we heard from a lot of parents and from a lot of teens is next summer, they really want more, te they want more camp. Everybody wants more camp. We've had enough in, in the house. So uh, we've actually changed our schedule for next summer. We were beginning to work on this pre-COVID, but we're offering one six week session. Um, it's from June 23rd to August 4th. But within that, there are some options to come for either two or four weeks as well. So I'm gonna let uh, Mac take this over and talk a little bit about what we call the blocks. Our, it's divided into three blocks and um, Mac, we're going to talk about the schedule, what's the same, what's some things that are different going forward, and then about the blocks. Yeah, so uh, as David was saying, we're making a lot of changes to uh, our program this summer. And so we wanted to kind of talk about a few of the highlights that uh, are going to be some of the big changes, some of the stuff that's going to be staying the same, and then we'll get into what is kind of special for each block. So. Uh, what are some of the new highlights that we're looking at for this summer? One of the things that we've heard from teens pretty much every year for the last few years is they want more choice, they want more agency over the programming, over what they're going to be doing each day. And so some of the ways that we've built that into our new program is with some of these options here. Uh, Zman Bechira is going to be a program that we've actually been offering for quite a few years now but we're going to keep it what it's our kind of largest elective program where we have about 20 to 25 different electives all happening at a time where these are run by our Madrichim. They're totally planned by our Madrichim and they're very specific. So if you're someone who wants to play basketball every day or you want to learn how to do some jewelry making it over an Omanu or you want to do ceramics maybe, uh, this is a time where you get to pick that specific subject, that specific topic and really dive deep into it. Uh, next, you'll see tracks where this is something where this, it's a little bit more general. It's a little bit more uh, something that if you're not so specific, like I want to play basketball every day or I want to do this specific art every day, maybe you just want to hang out with your friends and play sports. Or maybe you want to hang out and you want to talk about social action and social activism or peer leadership or Israel. Or uh, maybe you want to try a bunch of different uh, omanute mediums or art mediums or something like that. Um, 
this is a time where you can kind of pick a more general topic, something to kind of get a taste of, to kind of just, again, more now hang with your friends, kind of just do this activity, do, you know, dive into this topic, something that might be of interest, a little bit lighter and, and more kind of just uh, activity and experience based rather than having a specific goal. And then we're gonna have other options like uh, a new program that we're calling Bunk Bechira, where we'll have different, uh, different activities open up to different bunks each day and they'll kind of get to democratically choose which activities they get to go to and those will be kind of shifting from day to day and uh, that's kind of on top of some other choice activities that we've built in on Shabbat and uh, kind of in some special days in camp. And then some of the stuff that we're keeping the same, you know, we have uh, some specialty areas that have been phenomenal and we know our uh, teams really like to go to them like ropes course and like Sophie Ute. Uh, we also know that bunk time, at, you know, at night, those Kulot Lala Tov are really meaningful for building those relationships and building those bonds and kind of creating those friendships that we all, you know, hear about, know about, experience at camp. Uh, and then, of course, you know, things like Maccabi Ah, that is one of the huge staples of every summer at TY. Uh, you know, obviously, we can't get rid of that. And in fact, we're going to uh, bring it back in a way that's, I think, going to be better than ever. So uh, kind of going into uh, what David was talking about, these different blocks, uh, we're going to have three blocks that, can, that make up the full session. So again, the full session is from uh, the beginning of block one, June 23rd, to the end of block three, August 4th. But you see here uh, every two weeks, June 23rd to July 7th, block two, July 7th to July 21st, and block three, July 21st to August 4th are uh, experiences that you can come for and you still get to have all these options of uh, Bank Bechira, Zman Bechira, you get, you know, Shabbats, you're going to get Maccabi Az if you come for uh, a couple of these blocks, but maybe not all of them. And so really, uh, you know, all of these blocks are complete camp experiences and, and a great summer experience. But to really get everything that TY has to offer and to really, you know, what we think is everything and the best experience that, that you can have, the full session is is really, you know, kind of the the whole the whole thing that we can offer it's everything uh so kind of going into what's going to be special about these blocks uh in block one we're calling that explore and the whole idea here is to kind of go out to learn to discover to kind of uh explore new things so uh you know one of the best things about about ty specifically is there are people who come from all over the place and you know as david was saying earlier you're going to come, if you haven't already come home with friends, you're going to come home with friends that live, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of miles away from you. And you're going to want to learn with them and you're going to, it's a brand new community. Uh, there's other, also other great things like the Delaware River that uh, everyone in camp in the first block is going to get an opportunity to have an experience on, uh, as well as things like peer leadership, exploring what Israel means and, uh, you know, how a complicated relationship uh, with Israel can be uh, explored from many different ways. Uh, also, one of the big highlights in block one is going to be Maccabi Ah. Uh, this is, like I said, you know, one of the you know, best moments in camp. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that from the very beginning of summer, we kind of kicked it off uh, as best as we could. And so we decided to put that into block one. Uh, going into block yeah. two, uh, we're calling block two experience. And the whole idea here is to kind of move from exploration, kind of learning and, and, and exploring into experiencing. And the way we're highlighting that is through Trip Week, uh, which is an opportunity for everybody in camp to go out into the world to really, you know, kind of more the Northeast uh, and kind of uh, see what's going on and take some of the stuff that they've learned from first session and some of, the, some of the opportunities they've gotten to explore and really go out into the world and see how, how it kind of works and how it, it, it actually manifests in, you know, in real life and, and, and uh, kind of outside of the camp world. Uh, and then we're going to go into block three that we're calling ACT. And the whole idea here is we've taken, you know, four weeks at this point to explore. We've, got a, we've gotten some good experience in the world. And now we want to figure out, you know, what can we do? What, what do we do at camp? What do we do when we go back home? And how do, how do we make some action in the world? And how do we take all of this that we've just learned and experienced and not just leave it at camp, but take it home and let it become, you know, part of our lives and, and part of ourselves? Uh, and the way that uh, we're really going to kind of do that is, 
really starting to kind of explore what it looks like to be outside of camp with this new knowledge. And so uh, one of the ways we want to do that is through day trips that are going to be very focused and very specific to uh, some of the learnings that each of the age groups will go through over the first four weeks of camp. Uh, and one of the uh, other big things that we're going to bring back for round two is Maccabia. So this is something that we haven't done in years, is have two Maccabias in one summer. Uh, we're, I think we're really excited. And also, again, we know that this is a very exciting day. And it is, you know, we, we do know that some people won't be able to come for the full session. So if you're able to come for either the first or second, you know, the first and second block or the second and third block, you really also, you're, you know, getting a Maccabi in there, you're getting some trip week in there, and you're getting, a, 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 honestly, a, an incredible summer. Um, so, so let me just say another thing about, um, by that, while Matt catches his breath, is, um, you know, we didn't have Maccabi in 2020, so there's no reason not to have two in 2021. Um, and we'll talk in a few moments about why there are going to be some extra special people in camp during the first two blocks, first two weeks. So um, one of the other sort of reasons we're doing this is we, we know that some of you are thinking about um, wanting to return to the regional camps you went to and wanting to get a little bit more time doing Segel at, at, in Texas or doing um, Bogrim Esrim in CJ or going back to Midwest or going to tell you, uh, Sprout Lake afterwards for their new Bogreen Extreme program. We know you all, many of you lost your last year in your regional camps. So we are building with each one of the regional camps home and away options. And they look different for each regional camp because each one has a different schedule. Um, and so we're not gonna go through the specifics of each camps. There was an email that went out with links to the individual um, home and away programs that were combining with our regional camps, but also, you know, happy to talk those through with you, um, you know, offline after this. In order to encourage people to do that, we're tell you Huda is offering $500 uh, disc, additional discount. So if you're going to spend a couple weeks at CJ and then come to TY or go to TY and then go off to Segel at um, Texas, you'll uh, also save a little bit of money because those are, those are expensive um, expensive combinations. So it's $500 off of Tell Yehuda if you're coming to TY for four or six weeks or $250 off if you're um, going to be spending two weeks with us. So again, you'll be able to, um, um, you'll be able to sort of, we call it sort of build your YJ summer, build your best summer, get the best of all worlds. Why not? You lost it this summer. Why not next summer to get two things, two Maccabias, two camps, six Shabbats, the whole thing. Um, Max is going to talk a little bit about what happens in each age group. It's a little bit different in each age group. And then I'll talk um, a bit about our new program for 12th graders. So, uh, so more than uh, just kind of choosing, you know, what's going on through uh, action between the Explore Experience and Act, uh, we're also kind of stemming some of our uh, educational focuses on or through that mindset of, of explore experience and act and so uh Al-Amim is going to start with israel and so this is our ninth grade program where they're going to kind of dive into the challenging question of israel uh you know israel is a central pillar of young judea and we know that it's a challenging question and we want to take it on and we we know that our ninth graders when they come to camp are ready to take on that that conversation and to start it because uh, it's it's something that we we feel passionate about and if we're you know uh, if we're we just feel like we're ready to start it and to kind of really take it head on uh, then our 10th graders uh, Yachad are going to focus on uh, excuse me uh, they're going to really focus on whoops, sorry about that just, oh we lost some word today that's all right uh, so we added new pictures, so I forgot about them. Yeah, so uh, Yachad is going to focus on pluralism. And again, using one of our central pillars here, the idea here is that we want to explore Judaism from all different aspects of life, whether that's, uh, you know, Jewish culinary pluralism, uh, geograph ge geographical pluralism, religious pluralism, uh, whatever it might be. And uh, really the goal here is to it provide as many different opportunities and as many different experiences 
and allow our teens to really start shaping what their own experience might be in and what kind of practices and uh, what their Judaism is to them and, and as they move through uh, their teenage years, high school and, and into college. Matt, can you say a few words just about what would be the trip in Alamim and the trips in Yachad? Yeah, totally. Uh, so in Alamim, in block two during our trip week, uh, we have a four day trip that we call the Alamim Road Trip. It's, it's really awesome. They get to go through uh, upstate New York up to Niagara Falls, uh, kind of camping along the way, stopping at a place called the uh, Grand Canyon of the East. I've never actually gotten a chance to go, but I hear it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and then they get up to Niagara Falls and uh, make their way back with uh, some really awesome stops along the way and on the way back. Uh, then in Yachad, we have uh, four different options of trips, and the idea here is to really kind of uh, challenge yourself and to do something a little bit out of your comfort zone and, and to have some fun and, and have a really good time. Uh, so the four different trips that we offer is a kayaking trip where it's kind of a point-to-point -point kayaking trip where they come down the Delaware River. I think they cover somewhere in the 40-mile range over the course of four days, uh, eventually landing right in camp. Uh, then we offer a biking trip as well, where uh, they kind of bike through the Catskill Mountains, and that's a, I think they cover about 110 miles over a course of four days, uh, and they actually start in camp and come uh, back to camp on the bikes. It's, it's completely done on the bikes, which is a, a really awesome experience. I've gotten the chance to lead that trip a few times. Uh, and then we offer a backpacking trip where they're uh, covering, I think, about 30 miles in Harriman State Park. And then we offer a trip to uh, New York City where they're going to be exploring different Jewish communities and different uh, Jewish culture in uh, New York City. Great. Thank you. Let's talk about our, um, our 11th grade program. So then our 11th grade pro program, Hadracha, uh, all centers around social action and activism. And this is our kind of flagship program. This is uh, one that everyone kind of looks forward to uh, when they come through, you know, Young Judea. Uh, and the kind of, you know, the, the really awesome experience that's built into Hadracha is this program called Tikkun Groups, where we offer between 10 and 15 different topics that cover kind of different questions, different uh, challenges, different social issues that are going on uh, within the U.S. and within the world. And the teens get an opportunity to dive into that, uh, whether that's in, over the course of two weeks in the first block uh, or potentially three weeks between block one and block two. Then they get to go to D.C. at the end of block two and get to meet with people who work on the Hill, organizations who uh, kind of uh, uh, lobby for different uh, legislative practices, and they get to kind of share what they've learned and, and share what they think and, and where we should kind of move as a country and where laws should kind of move as they start to become, uh, you know, voting citizens and, and uh, again, into kind of young adulthood. Um, and then uh, for the last uh, block, you know, after, after they come back from DC, they'll get an opportunity to kind of highlight what they've learned and share with the younger campers uh, in a program that we have called Sadaka Palooza, and then diving into the last block uh, in ACT, where they, you know, will kind of start learning how, you know, how, how they can take this home and, and what they might be able to do in their own communities and what they can do in camp. Can't tell you how many and parents, you'll appreciate this. Um, if you have current 10th or 11th graders, I can't tell you how many kids have told me they wrote their college essays about their experience in Hadraha and their experience in their Chikun group. And I also can't tell you how many young people I know today who the work they're doing in the world is based specifically on the work they originally started when they were in Hadraha. So um, that's our Hadraha program. The other piece of it is it's their first college visit. So if Hopefully things will be as we hope they will be. They'll be spending four days on the campus of George Washington University. Um, and for many of them, it'll be the first time they're visiting college. I apologize again to parents that were staying at the most expensive university in the country and that some of them might choose that university later on. Um, so I make a disclaimer about that early on. Our newest program next year is a program called Gesher. And for the first time, we are having in many years, since certainly when I was a kid, uh, we are having our incoming 12th graders back at Tel Yehuda for two weeks and then off to Israel for three weeks. 
We are expecting to have some more information about that in the next few days, including what we believe will be a very, very significant grant for each one of the participants for their trip to Israel. Um, this is sort of an, another one of those best of both worlds kinds of things. We have a lot of our kids who were supposed to be in Hadjaha last summer who really, really want to be back at TY. Um, and, but they also really want to be in Israel. So we're going we're gonna to make all of that possible. Uh, some of the campers might choose only to go to TY or only to go to Israel, but we think the overwhelming will overwhelming number of them will, will choose both. And that's a little why we're having two Maccabi Aos, so that some of those kids who were not supposed to be in Hadjaha this summer get a chance to be captains next summer and still have another Maccabi after that. Because like I said, why not have two after a summer with none? So those are our programs that we're offering. What, what I'd like to do is take a pause here and I wanna throw all the young people out of here into a breakout room with Sivan and Massimo and Manny who can answer great questions and sort of talk a little about what's life really like being a teenager at Tel Yehuda. So we're gonna send you off in a moment and then adults, parents, we'll stay here. We'll talk a little bit about some specifics, supervision, staffing, money, and, and of course the questions you have about COVID. Um, and I know somebody's already asking, asking those questions about, about trips and COVID. We'll talk about all that in a few moments. So um, let's send them off to the breakout room. Um, bye kids. All right, if you are still here and you're a teenager, um, put that, you know, tell us you are in the chat so we can send you off to teenage land. Hi, parents. I know it's been tough. Been in my basement since March. Um, probably many of you have been also. I appreciate those of you who have great backgrounds. Um, all I've got is my, is my basement here. Um, I know you have questions about COVID. And again, like I said, I'm gonna to get to those in a few moments. And, but I'll just preface it by saying that, you know, none of us know the answers um, of exactly how everything's gonna go next summer. We know what we're planning for, and then we know what the contingencies we're working on as well in that reality. So let's just talk a little bit about um, some other things first. And I'm gonna throw it back to Mac for a few moments. Mac hires staff. One of the, one of the, 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 the main focuses of, of, of Mac, and he's so brilliant at this, is putting together a staff that's an international staff. Um, and we believe, and you probably believe this too, parents, that uh, your kids need some, some new adults. That's what I'm calling our, our madrachim, our, our, our counselors. They're basically new adults. They were just recently teenagers and they survived. And they are the very best, best for uh, teenagers to be around. Uh, one of the things that I, I like to talk to our staff about is in, in, in um, traditional societies, teenagers lived with their aunts and uncles and cousins and their slightly older aunts and uncles and cousins were there to help raise them. And then when we all got split up from each other, we sort of lost that. And I see our madrachim, our staff is replacing that as really being guides, which is what the term madrachim it means guides in Hebrew, is guiding them through this really difficult time. And I think they've really missed that this summer. So Mac is already at it. And we already have people applying for next summer. We have actually, it's interesting, a lot of people who didn't work this summer are already telling us they want to be in camp next summer. They missed it also. So Mac, you want to say a few words about our, about our staff, where they come from, why they're yeah. qualified? Yeah, totally. Uh, so uh, as David said, we, have, we hire a pretty large staff, actually. Um, you know, we hire, you know, obviously, depending on how many campers we have, but usually between 130 and 160 staff to uh, run our entire summer program. And uh, the, the, it's kind of a mix of a lot of different groups. Uh, the first group reflects, you know, our, our, our population, uh, our campers. There are campers who have graduated through the program, have gone on year course, have uh, come back and you know they kind of want to start providing the experience that they got and starting to take that role and and uh really starting to be a little bit more of a guide and, and mentor to some of the younger generation 
Uh, and so, you know, we have, we have staff almost every summer that come from all of the different junior camps, that come from a uh, year course, that come from, you know, they might be friends of friends or they may have uh, come from a different youth movement or something like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a large group of our staff have mostly experience in growing up in our summer camps and uh, really kind of turning the experience they had into the experience that uh, the teens will get now. Uh, the other groups of staff that come, uh, we hire a, a good chunk of staff from the UK with our partner organization, FZY, uh, that usually come uh, with a lot of different ruach and a lot of different style of programming and add a, a, you know, a flavor to, uh, to our staff that is just very different and, and always really exciting. Uh, and then we, uh, we hire a large staff from Israel as well. Uh, and uh, these are staff that mostly have just finished their army experience and are looking to kind of share their experience with uh, some, some Jewish youth across the world. And uh, we get an opportunity to go over there and, and meet them and do some extra training with them and uh, really set them up to come over and share their experience in a way that's meaningful, important, and uh, also really kind of creates a bond that you know we, we definitely see last more than just a summer. And that's also usually special when they go up, when uh, our teams end up on your course, and, you know, maybe they'll be able to meet up with one of their old Madrigam or, or something like that and get a coffee or, or something uh, in you know, Tel Aviv or in the Shuk or something like that, um, which is always a fun story to hear. Uh, and then we hire uh, some other staff that are kind of more uh, professional staff, uh, a little bit older, like our leadership team, our unit heads, our specialty area directors that are usually in college or just post-college. Uh, and you know, they're really in charge of kind of creating some of the program and the education. And so they come again with a background usually in Young Judea and uh, we do some training with them throughout the year and, and right before camp starts in how to build some, you know, really awesome experiential, uh, experiential moments and, and education in camp. Uh, and then we have kind of our real professionals in camp, like uh, our chefs, our, some of our office staff, and then uh, our, our health staff that David's gonna tell you a little bit about. Great, thank you. One of the special groups of, of uh, Israelis I wanted to mention is a group called Garin Atid. And these are kids who, kids, these are young people who are just finishing a year of uh, Shnat Sherut, of, of national service. And for their national service in Israel, they're on our year course program with our kids um, who are spending their gap year in Israel. They've just lived with them for the whole year and they're coming back with them to work at camp. So they've made that bond already. They've sort of gotten to know some things about the American culture. And, and one of, I think for me, one of the most meaningful moments of the summer is at the end of the summer when we say goodbye to Garin Atib because they're entering the army. And um, for our American kids, um, it is at least interesting to think about the fact that kids their own age are on a very different path than the one that they're on. Um, and many of them, like Max said, I am still in touch with a Tsofe, an Israeli scout that I met in 1976 in my bunk. So um, that stuff is powerful in terms of talking about what's the connection between American Jews and Israel. And there's all sorts of forums and, and experts speaking about it and people are spending a lot of money to figure it out. We figured it out. Um, it starts there. It starts with person to person connection. Um, and those become, those are life changing um, relationships. And then we can talk about all the politics and all the structures of the Jewish community afterwards. But it starts with those um, real, real relationships. This year also, we're working uh, during the third block to bring a group of campers from the UK, um, from, the, from the Federation of Zionist Youth, FZY, as their new summer program. So if you have a camper who may be staying through the entire summer, they'll likely uh, be hanging out with some Brits and take home a great accent with them as well. Again, building that sense of a larger Jewish world that they're in. It starts with the fact that I'm from New York and I have now a friend from Texas, and now I've got a friend from Tel Aviv and I got a friend from London. And all of a sudden the Jewish world is more than um, Westchester or more than Austin or more than um, Chicago. It is a bigger Jewish world. And I, and I think we don't talk about this enough, but I think that's one of the, the sort of big realizations that happens at Tel Yehuda and a reason to move from a regional camp, from a local camp to this national camp. And we are really the only Jewish uh, teen summer camp out there.
Um, there used to be two of us out there. Now, now there's really just us um, to offer that type of experience. So we're talking about staffing. And uh, one of the things that Mac mentioned, um, you know, we, we take health and safety incredibly seriously. We have on the line here, I don't know if you, I see his name, Russell Berner. Russell, are you there? I see your name. Russell is part of our camper care uh, staff. He's um, our camp social worker. And I uh, didn't even know he was coming, but I see his name. And uh, I can't tell you how busy he is, not because all the kids need social work, but because all the kids want someone to talk to. Um, and hey, Russell, wanna say hi? Yeah, definitely. Hello, everyone. I am Russell Berner. I've been the mental health specialist at camp um, the last two summers and uh, hoping to be back this summer. You, yeah, that's the plan. Wonderful, wonderful. Loving, loving hearing about all the new stuff. Fantastic. Very, very excited. Great. Um, and Russell's an alum himself. I knew Russell way back in the day. I am also, yes. I'm an old timer like David. I started at TY in 1977 and went through the years and went through the movement from there, year course, college, and now I'm back. Great. And you've had a summer off, so you are ready to, to, to get back to work next summer, Russell. Very um, definitely. And, and it's not, again, it's not just like therapy for kids. It's helping us think more holistically about, you know, what mental health looks like in camp for all of our kids. Um, and especially after, you know, this has been a tough summer. So we know next summer we have to be more, paying more attention to it than ever before. Um, and on, be, along, with, um, along with Russell, we have our nursing staff, um, some who will be returning from previous summers. Um, we have our well-equipped health center. We have, um, we're gonna have a big intake process when they first get there to make sure they're healthy, uh, to make sure they've had their vaccinations, um, to make sure they don't have lice, um, and to keep a good eye on them during the summer, make sure they don't have ticks. And we also have our parent liaison who is somebody for all of you to reach out to when you're personally having some questions and some trouble and you want to speak to the parent liaison about, about stuff. You know, other camps call it the camp mom. I sort of think of it as the parent mom. Um, and because uh, you will all have someone to talk to. Um, our food. We've learned in a teenage camp that we can't serve chicken nuggets every day that they might serve in a camp for younger kids. Our kids have more sophisticated palates. We are incredibly lucky. If you've been around Young Judea for a while, we have this guy named Stu Stein uh, who runs our kitchen and also makes hysterical videos um, on the internet. So you should check out Stu Stein on the internet. Stu was my camper back in the day and uh, he was the worst camper and he's the best kitchen manager ever. And he is constantly feels challenged to make sure the kids are enjoying the food that there's some fun that's going on in the Chatar uh, Each week he announces how many Mediterranean bars we're gonna have because he can't keep up with the amount of hummus and falafel that needs to be put out on a Saturday night. And um, he's introduced Pokey Bar, which I always have to check the bills on that because I think that's why we're playing so much for camp. Um, but we have Pokey Bar once in a while, barbecues. Um, and there's always a salad bar. There's always um, opportunities for, for campers who want alternatives in their, their menu. And also, obviously, we're catering these days to kids with all sorts of dietary uh, restrictions and making sure we, we um, cater to them. And somebody asked a question earlier on about kashrut. Um, we are a strictly kosher camp. Our, we have a mashkiach. Um, who visits camp regularly uh, from who's under the supervision of the Orthodox Union. Um, and if anybody has questions about or wants the Ashkacha or anything like that, happy to share that information with people. Um, and so I would say this, the food's really good at camp. If you went to camp, I went to tell you who I see some alumni on here. It's much better than the food we ate when we were younger. Uh, it's really great. And by the way, if you drop your kids off on opening day, you get a great buffet. And that buffet is everything that we actually eat during camp, during the summer. So we, 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 teach, we, we treat campers well when it comes to food. We recognize like this salad bar you're looking at right now, this might not, exi this might not exist next summer, right? We might not be able to have salad bars the way we have them now. We're already looking into um, what are gonna need to be the other options for how we serve food. We might not be able to serve family style, which we serve now. Um, we're, we're aware of those things, which is a little bit early to make those decisions. We don't know where we'll be in a few months, um, but we are looking at alternatives to how we put great food out in camp in different ways than we currently do. So this picture might have to go away at some point. All right. Um, 
Oh, I want to make sure I get a chance to answer all the questions. These are all ways we'll communicate with you during the summer, including a weekly newsletter called the Machaneh. There'll be videos on YouTube. We're all over social media, as you already know. Um, I can't even say enough about that. If you haven't, if you haven't watched the movie Social Dilemma, I recommend it, and you'll all want to get off social media. We, while you might be on technology next summer while the kids are away, the kids won't be on technology. I just want to make that clear. They're turning their phones when they get there. They've used them enough. Um, we'll take the phones and they'll be very happy to take a break from those, but we'll communicate with you through electronic purposes. Um, okay, so a few things about uh, money. All of this is on our website, by the way, and this is being recorded. Um, so we are, oops, I'm sorry. We are offering our um, early bird special until October 15th. Love you to register early, save some money. It's basically 100 off for each block you do. So if you're doing the full session, it's $300 off. And if you're doing um, uh, two blocks, $200 off. Then you do July 21st to August 4th. So I don't have my phone to you. Yes, those are the dates. Thank you, uh, whoever reminded us of those. I will say we've been very pleasantly surprised. We have about 50 or 60 campers registered so far, and uh, three quarters of them have chosen the full session, which we're really excited about. We obviously know not everybody's going to do that. Um, and so there are prices here if you're just doing one session, if you're just doing one block or two blocks or the full thing. We've also kept our four week price the same as last year. It's actually gone up by $10 just to make it simpler for, for everybody, but um, it's the same price as it was last year. We didn't think this was a year to raise prices and we've offered a significant discount if you're gonna do the full, the full session. Um, and then there's all sorts of discounts. So um, the, 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 for people who rolled over money or donated money, I, I have to say this, we were so incredibly wonderfully moved by the generosity of parents who had signed up for camp last summer. We had over $200,000 donated back to us and $200,000 rolled over this summer. It's why we're still in business because of our generosity. So for people who rolled over or donated, we're giving them an extra $500 discount on a full session. $200 discount for siblings. Some of you have siblings. $1,000 if you refer a brand new camper to us who's never been to a Young Judea camp before. And please do that. We love, we always love the brand new campers. I mean, we take good care of them and they stay for four or six weeks to thousand dollars. And then we have these home and away discounts. So if you're looking at a program at CJ and TY or Texas and TY, Midwest, TY, TY, Scott Lake, um, there are some discounts. We want to make that a little bit, um, a little bit more affordable for you. Um, traveling to Tell Yehuda. We are hoping that people will get on planes next summer and fly to Tell Yehuda into Newark Airport only. And there'll be specific information about the window of time. We'll pick you up or pick your kids up. We'll drop them off. We'll stay with them at the airport till they get on a plane. Um, and, um, and otherwise, you, there'll be a bus that's coming from Newark Airport that you can drop your camper off at, or you can obviously come up to camp and drop them off and come say hello, and we'll feed you well when you do that. And um, like I said before, you know, spread the word. Um, these are a few other things to maybe do right now. Uh, register online, or if you're rolling over tuition, you can, there's a special form to fill out. You can call us, you can email us. We have a little chat thing on our phone, on our website also, so chat with us. We get very few of those, we'd love them. Uh, please feel free to share stuff all over social media. Mindy, thank you, you're the best at doing that. We really appreciate it. Um, if you're onto TikTok, I'm not, uh, but if you feel like doing a dance with your kids on TikTok with TY t-shirts, let us know. And uh, 272 days, I think it's actually less now. I think I made that a couple of days ago. So what about COVID? Um, what about it? Um, so we don't know, right? We don't know what's gonna be by next summer. So we're planning, this is what we're planning is to be in camp. We are learning a tremendous amount from camps that opened last summer. Uh, there were a couple of Jewish camps that opened, Camp Modine in Maine, Camp Blue Star in North Carolina, uh, Camp Champions, not a Jewish camp. Uh, we, we, we were in a seminar with them just a couple of days ago. We're learning, that's one scenario, that's sort of like the worst case, or the close to worst case scenarios that we're opening with COVID still being the way it is right now. Um, and we're learning on, way, on ways that camp can open safely doing that um, by expanded testing, by smaller pods of campers for some period of time until we can open it up and we know we're COVID free. Um, but we're not expecting obviously that, none of us are expecting that. We just have to be planning for that. 
we're expecting that we'll have some sort of vaccine in place, or certainly the testing will become so much more, um, so much more and easily available. I don't know if you saw the news yesterday about the, the gargle test that they've developed in Israel that they're now employing in um, airports in Europe, where you gargle for 10 seconds and spit into something and it tells you if you have COVID or not. They're putting them in the first airports in Europe starting this week. We expect that there will be better technologies. If we have the type of te testing that we need, it will allow us to keep much closer track um, on what's going on. If we have a vaccine, we hope we'll have a vaccine. Obviously, that will make things much easier. Some people ask questions about trips. We recognize that some of the trips we run, we would not be able to run if we were still dealing with COVID the way we are currently now. Our outdoor trips, definitely we could run, but we would not be able to go to Washington DC and stay on the campus of George Washington University. And we'd have to find a different way, a more creative way to be in touch with our elected officials to do the kind of work we wanna be doing. So we do recognize that our plans are subject to change. It's why, and, and like I said, there's a very worst case scenario that once again, camps won't open again. I don't wanna imagine that right now. Um, and I don't want to plan for it. I do want people to rest assured though that this summer when we did not open camp, that every single family that asked for a refund received a refund, they've all been sent out already. Um, you know, we're not looking to keep your money and obviously the generosity of some parents, of many parents was incredibly helpful. Um, our cancellation policy is by March 1st, if you cancel, everything is returned to you. By May 1st, all but the deposit of $500. We waived that this year also if people started canceling because they were concerned about COVID. If we're in the situation we're in now and we need to waive that, we will again. We, we have no desire at all um, for, for the money piece to be the thing that's holding you back from starting to make plans for next summer. Um, we are consulting uh, next week, or not next week, I'm sorry, a couple weeks, our board is having a meeting. Um, we're consulting with a number of medical experts to get some uh, inside information on where we think things are going. We're talking very regularly with Tom Rosenberg, who's the director of the American Camp Association and a good friend of ours, um, about what camps are doing. We expect to get the support of the American Camp Association and the Foundation for Jewish Camp. We're working with them on a new program of scenario planning, where we're going through a few different scenarios and what those could look like for next summer. Um, and of course, working with the New York State Health Department um, around whatever regulations that they're going to, to have for next summer. So I can't tell you everything that might happen and how we've planned everything that might happen, um, but I can tell you that we know it's a fluid situation. Right now, we'd um, like to offer you and to your kids the hope that next summer and the very, very strong possibility, overwhelmingly strong possibility that we're gonna be able to get the team back together again, our team with your kids and have a, uh, a great summer on a safe summer. And we won't do it unless it's a safe summer. So let me uh, go through um, some of the questions that have been coming up. Um, Matt, can you say a few words about, um, oh no, I'm sorry, you did talk about the Yachad trips. Um, there's some more information on our website also about them or stay on, we're happy to talk about it. Oh, and it's been written as well. Um, will there be an open house at camp in the coming weeks for a tour? Um, I, I don't have one planned. I think it's a, it's a, you know, we don't have any groups at camp at the moment, but I'm gonna be up there a lot over the next few weeks. And if you are interested in coming up and seeing camp, please let me know. I actually have a couple of Sundays I'm going to be up there and happy to meet you up there and show you around. Um, somebody asked if they can roll tuition, if they roll tuition to CJ, can we just roll it over to tell you who or is it separate? You absolutely, for CJ, you can work with Gail, who's an amazing, amazing registrar, and she will take care of you. And if you're not gonna be at CJ, she'll roll that money over to TY. All the Young Today camps and Young Today programs, we are every day rolling money over to each other. Um, so we're all working very closely together to do 
Um, how many kids do you anticipate having a camp at any one time? That's a great question. Um, we're actually looking at our capacity numbers right now. One of the good things about TY is it's a huge camp and we never use all of it. So we actually can house over 460 campers at any one time. Um, we're, we're, we're right now keeping our numbers at 70% of that, which is sort of where a lot of camps are going at in terms of capacity is trying to stay around 70%, knowing that it could go up or could go down at, at any point. Um, but we're keeping that lower. Is there, if it, there's a vaccine available, are you going to require campers to have it? Uh, that, that's an amazing question. Um, and I wish I knew the answer. Our policy on vaccines is we require all vaccinations. And, and at some point we'll require all vaccinations related to COVID as well. I think the question is if the vaccine comes out a week before camp and it's not available yet, what we're gonna do about that. Um, but our goal would be, our hope would be in a situation where every camper has been vaccinated uh, for COVID before they come to camp. But I can't guarantee that that will be something that's available to everybody right now. Um, pricing for guest share, yep, coming very, very, very soon. Um, again, we're waiting to hear back about a uh, hopefully very, very large grant to help support go to Israel um, and to TY this summer. Um, Isabel or Mac, can you tell me about questions that we might have missed? Or if, you know, let's open this up right now. We'll turn everybody, you can go off mute and feel free to ask questions out loud. Uh, Rebecca. I, I Hi, have Rebecca. a question. So yeah. Ben, this is great, by the way. Thank you so much. Welcome. So ben did TY5 this summer and it was really fun. Are they gonna do anything like that, just like one-off events during the school year so they can stay in touch? Right, that's a, that's a great question. So actually there's, and there's two parts to the answer. One is yes from Tel Yehuda, but lar even in a larger sense, uh, through our Young Judea year-round programs, there'll be a lot of programming going on throughout the year. Um, and we're partnering closer more than ever with our Young Judea programs to make sure there are all sorts of teen things that are happening this summer and you'll be hearing about those. You're welcome. Um, how do you um, integrate kids from different blocks as they're coming in and out of camp in the course of the summer? That's, that's a, thank you, Rebecca. That's a great question. And you know, this is new for us to do it this way. Um, first of all, I, I have to say, I don't think we're going to see a large number, and we're seeing, already we're seeing this, we're not going to see a large number of campers who are going to come between the first and the second block. Um, we'll, we'll get a few. Um, we think most of the campers are going to come from either, either first and second block or the full session. Um, so we know we'll, we'll, we'll have some campers leaving after the second block. But there will be new campers. And um, you know, just like there are also campers who've never been to one of our Young Jaday camps before, and they're really brand new. And there will be some, um, you know, that opening day of each one of the blocks will include some activities to bring those new campers in. One of the things I think our staff is really, really good at is creating a, a, a bunk in which everybody really gets to know each other and everybody feels included. And then they're in a second group, which is their hug, which is a couple of bunks together. Same thing with that. Um, and there might be some switching around in bunks a little bit, depending on what the numbers look like. Um, but I think that we won't have a tremendous amount of brand new campers each session, but we will have a few. And the Madrachim, the counselors, really will, will be extra specially paying attention to those brand new campers. I would also add that uh, it kind of built into the schedule. Uh, if you you know check out our daily schedule on our website, um, Every, almost every day there's kind of social activities built in for the age group. So regardless of when that's happening, the kind of social dynamism is continuous throughout the entire program. So, you know, whether that's, you know, in the third week with, you know, maybe a few new campers or a majority of new campers, it's still kind of continually uh, asking kids to, to mix with each other, to kind of, you know, meet and make new friendships uh, while still developing friendships that may be there for a, a little bit longer. And we do the same thing with uh, other parts of the program when they're in the, you know, when they're talking about Israel or pluralism or something like that. The way that the program is built is to kind of work within two weeks, but also work within a four or six weeks experience. So they're kind of learning in a more horizontal way than in a vertical way. Instead of kind of building blocks, there is a kind of a more circular uh, approach. Um, 
Joel um, clarified his question. Uh, so will you require every camper to have the vaccine if it is available, even if it is a new vaccine? Uh, that's an excellent question. And I don't know the answer to that question yet. Um, I think that's gonna be, you know, we have, our, we have our medical team that we work with, our experts that we work with, and we'll have to make a, and also the New York State Department of Health and what they're gonna require. Um, we'll have to consult all of those to make a decision about that. Um, and I understand people will have great concerns about a brand new vaccine if it's coming out directly before the summer. So we're gonna take all of that into account and make some, some hard decisions. Uh, let's hope there is a vaccine. Um, and I hope we get to make that decision. But I understand why that is a, why that is a challenging decision. And I'm not looking forward to it. And like I said, I'm, I'm not a medical expert and I will, I will defer to a number of medical experts that'll make that decision. Um, Tam I saw, asks, yeah, go ahead. I, was, I saw one question that's kind of asking about like the vibe of, of TY and uh, you know, I understand, especially with, with teens that it could, it could be a potential kind of uh, potentially a scary place to, to step into if you don't know anybody or something like that. But I think, you know, even more so this year than ever, one of the beauties of, of TY is no one has spent their entire camp career uh, just at TY. And if they have, it's only been a couple of summers. And so, you know, especially this year, everyone who's coming, almost everyone who's coming will be coming for their first summer. And so one of the, I, what I consider beautiful challenges that we get at camp is kind of learning who these different groups are and how to get them to inter, intermix with each other and how to kind of tear down, not necessarily tear down, but loosen some of some of those cliques or, or former groups that got really close at maybe a junior camp or something like that and open it up. And, you know, I would say every year to see the difference between how we, how our social groups are mixing in Yachad in our 10th grade program versus in Hadraqa, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, in, in Yachad, we really see the transformation from these kind of different junior camps into one large group, uh, one large age group. And then in Yachad or in Hadraqa, you can't even tell who's from what junior camp anymore because everyone has a friend from every junior camp at that point. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things Max said, I forgot to mention is it, it's an interesting challenge for us this summer that we're not expecting more than probably about 60 to 70 campers who will have ever been campers at TY before, not including our Gesher group, because we missed a summer. And, and that's sort of fun in a way that so many campers will be new and will be creating everything from scratch. They won't be, they won't be walking into a place where almost everybody's been there forever, um, which is, I think, a difficult thing for teens. Um, how many campers are expected for each block? Uh, thank you, Tali, for that question. Um, you know, we, we're predicting. <laughs> we're, we're predicting about 300 campers who will be there for the first two blocks and probably about 150 or so that will stay on throughout the full session. That's the numbers are actually trending a little bit higher for the full summer right now. Um, and that's again with a capacity of about 450 campers. Our last couple of summers have been right around there, around 300 campers during what used to be called, called our first session. Um, how much luggage is allowed per child if flying is it sent earlier? That's a great question. Well, so we don't have a specific amount of luggage that we allow, um, but what parents who have kids who are flying often do is they'll ship some or all of their luggage beforehand by UPS or by FedEx. Isabel is sort of best friends with all the people who work at all the shipping companies and uh, will walk you through that process and make sure it gets tagged and it gets back to you at the end of the summer. Um, and a lot of parents have found it less expensive to actually ship the luggage than to pay for extra bags on the plane. Uh, but of course, we'll work with you on how to do that well. I know also if you're a CJ family that CJ has worked with uh, a specific company that ships luggage. And some of our parents, when coming to TY, will contact that company as well. I don't have the information specifically on that. Um, can you talk about the Chagim offered? Um, uh, great, yeah. Um, we, we use, as opposed to our junior camps, we use the word Chagim a little bit differently. We use Chag the way they use Eda at a junior camp, like the group that you're in. But I think by Chagim at, at CJ, uh, some of the other camps, um, includes um, uh, like what we call Zaman Bechira and specialty areas. So Mac, you want to talk about some of the different specialty areas that kids might be going to in Zaman Bechira? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so our specialty areas, uh, we have some, we have uh, seven or so uh, kind of larger specialty areas that are pretty common at, at a lot of camps. Um, so we have our ropes course, we have our pool, we have our Sofiyu area, that's the uh, Israeli scouts. We have Omanut, which is art. Uh, we have Rikud, which is uh, Israeli dance. And uh, I would say that's one of, you know, the most popular ones. Uh, Rikud, if you haven't heard about Rikud at TY, you will definitely be hearing about it after this summer. Uh, and um, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we have uh, uh, Shira, which is singing and uh, kind of singing different, uh, some old Israeli songs, some new Israeli songs. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think, we have a few others uh, out there. Uh, you know, we're hoping to have a garden again this year, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, it's a challenging programmatic space. We have a drama uh, department uh, that is really good for kind of team building amongst uh, different bunks and things like that. Um, and then some of the Zmane Bechira, uh, you know, that's the time that we offer a, a lot of different uh, options, uh, usually between 20 and 25. So without listing all of them, I'll see if I can give a kind of variety. Uh, so, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have things like jewelry making, we'll have things like, you know, basically every major sport you could think of. Um, we've had, uh, I think one of my favorite ones in the last few years was the Zionist Power Hour, where they sat for, you know, 45 minutes a day and kind of talked about different Zionist thinkers, modern and, and more historical. Um, and, you know, you might be surprised to hear that was actually a successful Zman Bechira the team signed up for. Um, but, you know, it, it was, and, and it was really awesome. Uh, and then we've had some, you know, really quirky ones like Quidditch or uh, something called paper football uh, or golf, uh, which wasn't actually golf. You think it would be, but it wasn't. Um, you know, uh, just some, some really fun stuff. And those are all developed by our Madrichim, uh, which is a really awesome opportunity for them to kind of bring themselves and for them to kind of share something that they like to do or that they're a little bit passionate about with some campers in camp that might not necessarily be in their bunk or uh, even in their age group. Thanks, Matt. Um, Judith Turner, who I know since I'm uh, like a, a high school kid, asks the question, hi, Judith Turner. Um, can you give a can you give us a virtual tour of the camp, including inside the bunks? I can't do that right now. I wish I had all that cool stuff to do uh, that some camps have, but I do have a ton of pictures um, that show inside the bunks everywhere. And I think what we're gonna do is put together really a great, a great album of sort of you know, your way around camp. And I dream of having one of those clickable map things where you can go on our website and click a place on the map and see what it looks like. Um, but until I have them, um, I'm going to do that and um, happy also Judith. I'm going to go up to camp in a couple of weeks. Happy to also take some videos. Is there, are you looking for your name in a bunk or is it that you just like to see what they look like now? I'd love to see it now and I'll join you for that trip. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, and thanks Beth. That's a great idea to, to link that to Facebook. So um, we'll put that up there as well. Um, Jen Strasser, I don't know you, but I like the virtual background you had a moment ago. So if you want to put that back up again, it looked like you were in a space capsule or something. So that was cool. We noticed. Um, are there any traditions that we should know about to prep our kids for wearing white on Shabbat? There you go. Everybody look at Jen Strasser's uh, background. I think it's, oh, it's not the Starship Enterprise. All right, Jen, you have to tell us what that is in a moment. Um, uh, so we've, <laughs> tutus were really good. Um, uh, you know, as opposed to the younger camps, we, we've, we found over the years that it's hard to get teenagers to wear white on Shabbat as much as, you know, it's a beautiful tradition for younger kids. Um, but um, Mac, you, are, you know, they do need colored shirts for Maccabiya, but they won't know what color they need. The kids all switch with, with each other when they get there. They eventually all find those colors. There are some kids who will bring a red shirt, or an orange shirt, and a blue shirt, and a green shirt, and a yellow shirt. Trying to imagine that they're ready for Maccabiya. Um, I wouldn't go too crazy with that, though. Um, anything else, Mac? You think that they should like be set for in terms of tradition? No, I think you kind of mentioned it all. Um, you know, some kids like to wear athletic wear for recruit. Um, in general, you know, red, a red, a blue, a white shirt for for Maccabiya. Um, yeah, I, you know, not, not, nothing so crazy. Um, 
I just want to say, because Macro would recoup, recoup to tell you that Saturday Night Dance is, you know, is sort of recoup slash aerobic workout. In fact, one of the shirts that a lot of the kids like to buy, which they sell at the end of the summer, is recoup is my cardio. And, you know, if you've never seen our videos of this, there's some on our YouTube page. Um, you know, they're doing an hour serious workout. Um, it's craziness. It's, it's wonderful to see. I, I miss it so much. Um, so yeah, they're going to need some, uh, some athletic wear for that. Um, and, and for trips in terms of stuff they need, you'll get a list depending on what trip they're going to go on. So for instance, you know, hopefully, hopefully our Hydra Hot kids will get to go to Washington, D.C. They're going to need a nice shirt um, to go when they're, when they're on Capitol Hill. Uh, if they're going backpacking, there'll be information what they'll need for their backpack, et cetera, that you'll get um, in, in advance. Okay, um, I think we've gotten to all the questions. Uh, this is just uh, hopefully the first conversation uh, that we have together. Oh, wait, one more question. Is there, if they choose between four trips, do they choose before coming? Yes. Great question. Yeah, they'll get that list of uh, choices somewhere probably in April and then find out a couple weeks before camp which trip they're going to be in. Um, so we're really available. I mean, we've, we're sitting in our homes. Um, our, our favorite thing is to talk to you. So a couple of ways, again, uh, call us. We're actually invest, investing in a new phone system as we speak, hopefully actually to save money, not to spend more money. Um, we have a little chat feature right on our website. So chat us up. We have these thing called beacons where you can also search for information if there's a specific question you have on our website. Um, you can reach Isabel, you can reach Mac, reach my, myself. Um, Noah will be out for the next few weeks and then he'll be back and he's great to talk to also or you can call him and ask him to sing you a song. Um, and uh, on the bottom of our signatures, there's a Calendly thing. So you can schedule a time if you wanna do that instead. But please, feel, you know, feel free to, to, to call, chat, um, and answer as many questions as possible. So we did go over by 15 minutes. I don't know, did the kids finish, by the way? I, I'm not 100% sure if they're finished because I haven't seen Manny or Massimo or Sivan come back. And uh, the last I heard a few minutes ago from Massimo, they're having a great conversation. Okay. One of the big topics was the phone policy at camp. Ah, the phone policy. <laughs> The phone policy. So yeah, I mentioned this before. We we let them uh, we let them give us their phones, and I I will t and I'm not exaggerating about this. I, I, in 2019, I have to keep saying last year. I mean 2019, there was a group of kids who cried when we gave their phones back. Now I'm not saying it's all the kids. I don't want to exaggerate this. <laughs> there are some kids who are also happy to get back on Instagram and post their pictures, but but I have rarely heard a camper complain. There are campers who try to hide their phones. We know that. There are parents who give their campers two phones so they can hide one and give in one. We know that. Um, we have creeping cellular service into camp, so some of them will use that if they've hidden a phone. We know that. Right? I don't want to say that we, we are completely successful with this, but um, we have a safe full of phones. And if they go on a trip to a city, we let them take their phone with them, and that is for security purposes because that outweighs the, anything else. But otherwise, their phones stay with us. Um, if you would like to contact them, we have a couple of ways. One is you can send, and again, I think almost all of you, or maybe all of you have sent campers to one of our younger camps. We use the same camp minder system. You can type out a, an email and then we print it out and give it to them and they can write back and it goes back to you. So you, you, know, you can be in touch with them. We'll let them call home on their birthday or on your birthday, or if there's an emergency, obviously, you know, we're not trying to keep them away from you, um, but we just wanna give them a break. And I think at the end of this coming school year, um, with so much of it being on Zoom, everybody will be ready for the break. And maybe some of you will be ready for a little bit of a break from them as well. Um, I see some head shaking over there and some smiles, not because you love them, but we'd like to take them for a little while and give you a break and plan a great vacation if you can. Um, okay, uh, according to Robbie, they are still going. I'm sitting in the same room as my daughter. Robbie, can you ask your daughter if you're having a good time? Having a great time and uh, I'm 
I think I'm getting rid of both of my daughters this summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> one at CJ and one up in New York. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's good for everybody. It really is. Um, and we, you know, having had a, a summer without, without kids, um, we, are, we are incredibly ready to get back to it. We're itching for it. So uh, thank you all um, so much for giving some time this evening and hearing and, you know, spread the word. I know some of your kids have friends who are still on the fence and, um, you know, let's get them signed up. And, you know, obviously we want them to sign up so that you pay us, right? But, but you know, the main reason I think to sign up, to be honest, is we all just need something to look forward to. We are, and, and next summer is something great to be looking forward to. And in some capacity, even if it's not exactly what we want it, but in some capacity, our plan is to be back in Barryville next summer. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay together. And have a Shana Tova and a Gamar Chatima Tova. <laughs>